الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Seeking refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan, we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most gracious of all creation and who is absolutely the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, I know it's dark outside, but it's only like 6 o'clock. Bismillah, let's try this again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's good. Alhamdulillah, that was much better. My name is Shihab Ahmed. I am going to be your host this evening. For background, I am your common layman. I drive a car that's five years older than me. Yes, that's a 1995 station wagon. It's uh, outside, so if you see it, feel free to take pictures or cringe and disgust. That, that works too. Uh, I'm in my second year at Georgia State and my third year at Tibyan, the all-in course program that goes on right here in Masjid Omar. Personally, I love the program because it feels more like a family than a school. And many times I really wonder if I'm actually learning anything because we seem to be enjoying the class every single day. But the way the teachers have set up the program, it becomes both enjoyable and fruitful. And what more could you ask from a school? Anyways, I am who I am first and foremost due to the blessing of our sponsor this evening, Allah. So, alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Secondly, I would like to sincerely thank my parents, my family, my teachers, my friends, and everyone else who has helped me come this far. But I'm not the topic for this evening, so enough about me. We would like to begin by saying thank you to everyone that is here and making dua for everyone who couldn't make it. May Allah grant them and us the strength to deal with all of our trials and grant us admittance into Jannah. Ameen. Now, the one in discussion tonight is the one who went to go preach in a community. And that community started pelting stones at him to the point where blood filled his shoes and he became unconscious. Now, when he woke up, he immediately asked Allah to resolve his weaknesses and not theirs. The one we're talking about tonight is the one who would mend his own shoes and patch his own clothes. And the one that we have been calling Rasul for 1400 years. And the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest role model, not only for Muslims, but for all of mankind, and I'll, and I'll explain this in a minute. Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, say it with me now, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, we all love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this isn't hard to tell. I mean, look around you. We're all here solely out of the love of our beloved Prophet. Unless you're here for the food. <clears throat> and the fact that we're all here shows our love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The issue is, there are many people who act like they already know the stories of his life. They act like they were there, and they act like they're better than everyone just because they know these stories. But the fact of the matter is that even if we know these stories, we fail to derive the morals from them. And this is a lesson which hit me hard when I realized it. You see, I was reading one of my father's old business books written by Napoleon Hill. And uh, it was a really good book until I came upon this chapter. It was called Persistence. It was teaching you persistence. Uh, the chapter caught me off guard when it started talking about the Prophet. It said, He, sallallahu alayhi wa had preached for 10 years and had nothing to show for it but banishment, poverty, and ridicule. Yet, before another 10 years had passed, he was the leader of Arabia, ruler of that very city he was banished from, Mecca, and the head of a new world religion which was to sweep the world from the east to the west. Now, I had to stop at this point because I realized I already know the Sira, but how is a book that was written in 1937 teaching me this lesson about my own religion? Moreover, how am I going to a completely secular book about business, and how is that book going to point me back to my own religion? Well, it brought me to the edge of tears. Then I understood that even though we might know these stories, we have much to learn from them. Because there's a difference between knowing a story and understanding the story. And it's not just Muslims who can derive morals from his life. Any intellectual human can withdraw a lesson from his life. And they have, as we saw here. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight, inshallah ta'ala. We will begin with the recitation of Quran by Hafiz Farhan Shajaluddin. Hafiz Farhan completed his hifs in Darlum of Atlanta in one and a half years. He was 11 when he finished. Now he's in 10th grade and he attends a local high school. 
from which he has received many outstanding achievements. Now with all this in mind, let's begin inshallah ta'ala. Sujada, 
Allah. Again, that was Hafiz Farhan Shujauddin. Now, I want to talk for a minute about what I drew from the meaning of the verses that he just read. Many times we think of our Prophet وسلم, as an untouchable figure. And while we do believe that he was protected from sin, this doesn't mean he wasn't a human. He did struggle. He did laugh. He did cry. He did love. He did fear. The entire objective of us looking up to him is because he was human, just like us. And these are the fine points that we all need to remember in our lives. And that is what we're going to be doing tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Now, the order of our program will follow as such. First, we will be discussing the importance of family in, life of the, messen in the life of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa with Mufti of Surah Ali. Then, we will be discussing the importance of community in the life of the Messenger with Imam Abdullah Jabir. And finally, we will discuss the importance of loving Rasulullah with our esteemed guest, Mufti Samir Wahid. So, let's begin with Mufti of Surali. And there's no need to introduce him because you know him very well as the Imam right here in this very masjid. Now, one of the keys to a prosperous Muslim life is family. Because although we can change our friends, although we can change our teachers, we can never change our family. And this is a beautiful metaphor for the Ummah. For if we cannot stand together as a family, how can we stand together as an Ummah? Uh, yes, we will have differences. Yes, we will argue. But the fact that the Muslim Ummah has retained this aspect means that the Prophet ﷺ set a great example for us. And, that, uh, and this is what my teacher is going to be discussing now, inshallah ta'ala. The importance of family in the life of the Messenger.
just said, and he is also in the answer. Many things he is doing at the same time, and he really needs a, a, a big zeal, a great zeal to, to, uh, to accomplish all these things in the name of the hand of God bless him for all his hard work. And, and another Hafiz who decided the Quran, Hafiz Farhan, Shahidahuddin. He was also small and many started, he was very small, right? Even here, here in the fall. He was so innocent, he was so innocent, he used to bring his food from home every day. And someone asked him, can he eat your food? He said, okay, go ahead and eat that. And then he used to go home every day and eat. That was, that, that, that was me, but the happy that today you see him, that my Allah is tired of Quran, beautiful, and he is one of the strongest kuffar among children in the community, alhamdulillah. So I just, I just wanted to share with you about these students because you see them that when they are on the right track and children and students and they have a good life, then you see them that they are successful in this world and at the same time they are successful in the hereafter. Now, I started my talk with these two couplets. Uh, they are very big, so it was known since we are talking about the Prophet Muhammad and it is very famous to say, Bala al Bala fi Kamalihi, Kashaf al Bijan al Kamalihi, Hassan al Bijan al Kifalihi, Salu alayhi wa alayhi. Bala al Bala fi Kamalihi, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reached his highest by his skill, by his, by his heart. Kashaf al Bijan al Kamalihi, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he liked him, he illuminated the world with his jamaat, with his beauty, the beauty of his speech, the beauty of himself, the beauty of his character. Kashar al-Kujar al-Jamali, he has to let the jamali of his army. All his characteristics were beautiful. All his characteristics, all his ala and ala, they were beautiful and they were something to follow. And then, at the end, the Shai says, Sultu Ali wa Ali, upon his great personality, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in this world for us to follow him, for he sent him to guide us, then the Shai asked to uh, send the salutations upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I will request all of you, read the Guru Garden of Peace of Allah, one or two lines, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Single mothers, they are many single mothers in the society. You see that they live 